Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yesterday morning, I was in North Carolina along with Seth, and we had been attending a conference for the past several days. Yesterday morning, when I woke up, it was still dark outside, and in my fogginess, perhaps, I looked out into the darkness and I picked up my phone and checked email, even though my mind was absolutely not awake enough to do anything with the email. I scrolled through the news on my phone, though, again, my mind was absolutely not awake enough to really comprehend or do anything with the news of the day either. I scrolled through, you know, the other stuff on the phone, and I felt a familiar worry and anxiety building up. Comforting, perhaps, in its familiarity. The familiarity of a habit, right? Checking email, checking news, without even thinking about it. And then, also familiar, in a, in a familiar way, I started to worry. I scrolled back in my memory of the day before, and as we were meeting and talking with various people, I found myself worrying that something I had said to, to one of the people we'd met had caused them harm. Oh, did they take that the wrong way? Did I not phrase that as best as I could? I started, as I, as I scrolled back through more of the, of the day before, I worried that I had not done enough, I had not been doing enough. And perhaps the most familiar worry of all was even at five in the morning, as I began to think about the day ahead, worried that already in the day, there was too much to do than could fit in the day. And as I felt in my body these familiar beginning of the day worries, I also felt and heard a voice inside ask, who are you listening to? And yearning for those familiar feelings, I tried to ignore that voice. Where are you coming from anyway? And again it came. Who are you listening to? Quiet, yet insistent. I scrolled through some more stuff. Who are you listening to? It said. Without an answer, or without a good answer, I stepped outside. I went outside where it was still dark. And for me, going outside, no matter how many things are going on, is what I do when I don't have an answer. Because we were nestled there at a conference center in the hills of western North Carolina, I set out for a hike through the hills, but then, you know, it was dark, so going hiking through unfamiliar mountains in the dark didn't sound like a good idea. That was probably not the right answer, whatever the answer might be. So I walked down to the lake, and by the time I got to the lake, there was a faint rose glow emerging above the tops of the trees to the east. Rose and then lavender and then magenta and not only in the sky above the trees but also reflecting off of the clear glass lake so that all was glowing rose, lavender, magenta. 
Magenta. And then as the light emerged more fully, the trees and the creatures emerged as their full selves in their natural blues and greens and browns. I was astonished to hear a whooshing through the air. As you, as you know, I moved last year from Chicago, which every summer over Lake Michigan has the air and water show, demonstrations of planes and of ships uh, in the harbor. And it's fascinating, and I used to work um, downtown in one of those high rises that had amazing views, planes flying right before my eyes in those floor-to-ceiling glass windows. Not at the church where I was, but before I worked in that church. And it's so entertaining, but also, if you live in Chicago long enough, you also learn to go out of town that weekend. <laughs> but kids, you could, just can't have conversations without huge, just like, rumbling whooshes overhead and even vibrating through all the buildings, even if you are like 10, 20 miles away from the demonstration. So I was startled by this whoosh in the air, and it brought me right back to the Chicago Air and Water Show. There was birds that were moving the air above me, and I felt it, that were whooshing so audibly that my jaw dropped. And they kept doing this, sweeping and soaring and diving behind the trees and rising back up again as if they were performing an air and water show just for me, as if they were blue angels. I watched them and listened to them, astonished for I don't know how long. I found myself startled again when I heard a splash. And then I, I looked at the lake and I saw some displacement among the lily pads. And I wondered if a frog had leapt from a lily pad into the water. Looking at the water, it seemed to sparkle and glitter. And I noticed the gnats dancing on the water surface, making it light up all around them. And then I heard like a gauzy, heavy, slow flap of wings, bigger than the birds overhead, but closer by. And I looked, and there were geese taking their spot at the water's edge. Who are you listening to? The voice said again. Who are you listening to? Until I stepped outside, I was listening to my own worries, my own fears of scarcity, of not enough. I stepped outside and I heard and saw an abundance that is at play. The frogs, the gnats, the geese, the birds playing. Whether I stop to realize it or not. The day before, those of us who were at the conference center, no matter what our reason or uh, the gathering that brought us, all of us gathered for a few moments in the afternoon in solidarity with all of the youth around the world who stepped out of school, who stepped out of their jobs, who stepped out of whatever they were doing for the climate strike, who stepped out and used their voices to say what's happening now is, is not right. We will use our voices
experiences to the fullest. Because this is our world and our earth, and we must be better. Urging adults and everyone around the world to wonder, who are you listening to? We have stepped out of school, we have dropped everything to raise our voices. Who then are you listening to? It is a time more than ever to listen to the voices of the most vulnerable around us, who have the most to lose and the most to risk, whose voices may be the smallest in the eyes of some, but are the very most important for us to hear. As I continued watching and listening to the birds whooshing above me, I remembered that report that came out last week that there are now 25% fewer birds than there were 10 years ago. When we listen to wealth, we hear fear. The voice that trembles quietly and afraid. When we listen to wealth, we hear distrust. The voice that wonders, when others see me, do they see only my wealth? Therefore, I do not know who I can trust. And we harbor more within that fear. When we listen to God, we hear abundance. We hear the voice saying, there is more than enough. When we listen to God, we hear generosity. The voice that proclaims, that shouts, I have more than enough. And I want to give it to you because I am so grateful for you and all that I have that has been given to me. When we listen to God, we hear relationship. The voice that proclaims that we are made to be with each other, with each other, and to be known and seen and loved for who we truly are. When we listen to God, we will know and we will hear and we will feel that it is true. That the abundance is before us whether we step outside and see it or not. That the frogs are always leaving. And the birds are whooshing and doing tricks about them. And the geese are flapping and the gnats are dancing. It depends who we listen to. 
When we listen to God, Jesus urges, we will know that in the eyes of God and in the very hearts of God, we are enough and there is enough. Who are we listening to? 